Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Vero Impulse, a frame lock with a really cool uh, Tanto grind on it. Thanks so much to Corey for lending this uh, for review. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Depending on when you're watching this, there is a new version of the Impulse coming. So if you're looking at this and going, that's a Vero, those are hard to get. Yeah, they are, but there's a new version of this coming. So you might want to check out the Vero website and follow uh, Joseph Vero or Vero Engineering on Instagram so that you can kind of keep up to date. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the Impulse coming in at 8.75 inches overall. Blade length is coming in at a sh just, just shy. It's about three, I'm gonna say it's 3.75, maybe just shy of that. And then your actual cutting edge is just shy of three and a half. Let's do some size comparisons with some other large Vero knives because this is a fairly large Vero knife. Here's my own personal uh, Synapse XL. The Synapse XL is a, is it? It might actually be the exact same length. I was about to say it's just a bit bigger. It is, it's just a bit bigger. And then this is my Vero Isotope, um, which I believe is also just a bit bigger. But um, just, uh, you know, keep in mind, the uh, the Impulse is absolutely, yeah, it's also a bit bigger. The Impulse is absolutely a full-size knife. I wish I had some smaller ones. I like all of Vero's stuff, but I am a, I'm a very specifically a fan of the larger knives that he puts out. So uh, anyways, just a few more size comparisons with some common knives up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, definitely a uh, fairly big boy. And then uh, we'll just do a couple more. The Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Spyderco Para 3. Is that... Yeah, I think that's probably enough. You guys probably get the size. Uh, so these are, to my knowledge, still being manufactured by Best Deck, which I've said in many reviews, Best Deck, if you were to ask me four or five years ago, you know, what's their quality? Well, I can't say five years ago. The first Best Deck I ever handled was probably about four years ago, um, which cra it's crazy. First, Yeah, something like that. Anyways. <laughs> I would have said they're pretty good. Now it's really hard to uh, it's really hard to determine the difference between Bastec and Riot in some cases. Depends on what the model is and who designed it, who sent over the information, right? Because sometimes that translates differently. But Vero is some of the uh, you know this this is one of the best examples out there of what Bastec is capable of doing. The fit and finish and the action and everything on these guys is just wonderful. The detent is still a little bit of a lump, right? It's the same exact thing with my isotope, and it's actually still the same thing with my synapse. Uh, I, I'd like them, I, I think I think maybe maybe they need to heavy up the detent a little bit, uh, give that um, maybe a little bit more lock bar tension and get that ball to sink in a little bit deeper, and it would also, I, I think the, the action would feel a bit more crisp. Um, and we'd get that satisfying click. But as it sits, it's pretty good. The detent is a solid B. It's pretty good, right? Uh, and yeah, these will uh, eventually fall shut. This one still feels like it's breaking in just a little bit, but it's nice and smooth. Very good. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spider Co. Para 3. You can see here it is a little bit thicker. There's some heavy chamfering. It's not quite contouring that's going on. It's definitely a little bit thicker. Carry profile, length, and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This is basically a big, long, rectangular shape. It's definitely a little bit longer than even the PM2. Nowhere near as tall as either, so do with that information what you will. This guy is a titanium frame lock, um, like the uh, isotope here, uh, but not like the, uh, these are bolster locks, right? Or you have like a sub frame lock, whatever you wanna call that. And that's nice because the frame lock is not entirely exposed, making it a little bit easier to position your fingers so as not to put unnecessary pressure on the lock bar. With this being an exposed frame lock and a pretty wide exposed frame lock, you do need to kind of be careful that pocket clip serves as a good guide for your finger when you're not looking at it, right? I just, the frame lock versions are cool, and this one works a lot better than one of the other ones that I handled. I think it was the Axon. The Axon was a little bit smaller. Um, I like these larger knives, especially, you know, 
if they are frame locks, it these, this larger size makes it a lot easier to keep my fingers off of that lock bar. But I will say, I still prefer the, uh, you know, kind of the sub frame lock or the bolster lock thing a little bit more. This is still cool though. Uh, we'll do a, uh, let's take a look at the inside real quick. Titanium, you can get my flashlight down in the description. These are actually milled for weight reduction, which is cool. Um, you know, you'll get that, I would venture to guess, on the full titanium frame lock versions. Not so much on the bolster lock versions because of how they cut the material. Weight, by the way, blade steel, we're looking at M390. Weight on this guy, coming in at 5.64 ounces. We'll compare that with the isotope at 6 ounces. And the Synapse XL, which is still coming in actually heavier. <laughs> so the... Uh, the uh, the impulse is actually the it, it's about the same. It's almost exactly the same as yeah. We're getting different readings now. Um, different readings, <laughs> different weight. Uh, it's about the same as the Synapse XL. So there you go. Let's go ahead and do a uh, well. Let's measure the blade stock thickness first. I think that couples better with weight, or it'll help make sense of the weight. I don't think the blade stock is any different than the isotope or the um. Synapse, yeah, 155,000. It's pretty thick, but these are ground fairly well for how they're thick, uh, how thick they are at the stock. Uh, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Same place you can find the flashlight. I'm gonna go with T8 because I'm pretty sure that's the way they've always been. E yeah, T8, and then unfortunately we still have T6 screws down here. That's the one thing that has always bummed me out. Now we use T8 on the uh, the isotope, which is great. And yeah, no, I'm just wrong. These are all T8. I wonder why we are suddenly doing T6 on, well, I mean, truthfully, the, um, the impulse has been out for, I think about a year. So I'm late to the game. Um, but uh, yeah, I really wish those were T8. I don't know why they're T6, but okay. You know, hey, Get yourself a set of nice tools like the ones that I use. Uh, get a place to put your hardware. You know, uh, you should be good to go. This isn't a, a complicated um, construction, so it should be pretty easy to disassemble. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes of the review. This is very similar to other, you know, Vero designs where we have the um, rectangle, the deployment rectangle, right? Same as on these guys. And then we have a super low profile flipper tab, which works very well, uh, light switching it. You uh, can get this to fall down and catch your finger uh, to act as a stop right there on the sharpening choil, but it's very close. And that's because since the flipper tab is so low profile where you would normally catch it would be right here, but it, you can see there, that's it's not gonna work because of the, the angle he did it, right? So you're gonna have to catch it either, I thought maybe on that flat, no, it's just barely gonna catch there. So if you're gonna do that, do not disengage the lock bar way down here because guess what? The first part of the of the blade that touches your finger is the actual cutting edge. You want it to meet. If you're going to do that one-handed, you want it to meet right there on the um, sharpening choil, just like that. And then you'll be fine <laughs> for, you know, just for the professional couch flippers out there, right? <laughs> this is where you're wanting to disengage it. Um, and, you know, during normal use, too, I can understand being busy on a construction site. You've got one hand doing the more important thing, and then the hand manipulating the tool is kind of secondary in your subconscious, right? So just be as high up as you can, uh, bypass that uh, initial flipper mound, and you should be okay. But the detent is, like I said, it's a little bit on the light side, but it's good to go because of the angle that you're, you know, approaching that flipper tab. And then, of course, using the um, deployment rectangle in the back end is incredibly easy. This is just, you know, easy to manipulate. You're not going to, your fingers are not going to tire out. It's not a pain to manipulate. This is cut uh, very large and open um, for you to access. It's interesting how he angles it because you're going to be disengaging it like right there. Um, but yeah, you can get at that. I kind of wish this side was milled just a little bit lower because that lock bar will wear in over time, making this space right here more and more and more narrow, but it's fine. The way that it is, those are scalloped very deep, so it's really easy to get your fingers in there. No problem. The blade, we have a hand rub satin finished stubby tanto. I love this tan. It looks so good. And honestly, the lines on a Vero like these look good. These other ones, the Synapse XL, and then the more of a it's it's more of a clip point on the isotope. So we have three different blade shapes here. They all look great. The one that looks the most Vero-y, like 
personally my favorite looking blade shape just by itself if we're just looking at the blades it's going to be this guy up here but if you you count the lines of the vero right so this these angles back here the one that looks the most thematic is the tanto the tanto looks great and it's a super strong tanto with it being you can see how thick that grind is out there which is going to be good depending on what you're doing with it the thinner slicier edge is going to be down here in that big nasty thick tanto sort of hatchet edge is going to be up there um, which is nice the downside to having two completely different angles is that you're going to be sharpening i'm sorry two different uh you know there's there's a distinct angle right here you're going to be sharpening this and you're going to be sharpening this it's going to be different and over time this is going to round this is going to start to look funny because of how it's how, how this is ground out but it looks really good. This is very similar to the same idea. It's not a copy of the Umnum Zan Tanto, but it's very similar to that idea and I like it. It just looks good. The uh, This edge out here complements the swedge up top. It just looks nice. I like it. And you know, if I'm gonna go with a satin finish, fortunately, this is great. We actually have, I think, all three finishes uh, by Vero out here. We have his uh, tumbled finish, which is my favorite finish, absolutely. Then we have the hand rub satin finish, which is this guy right here in the middle, the one the review is on, <laughs> the impulse. And then we have the uh, belt satin finish, which is my least favorite. Um, so yeah, if I'm gonna go with satin, I'd much rather have the hand rub satin finish. I think that looks great. Fit and finish on this guy all the way around. We're talking blade grind, seating of the hardware, everything is just fantastic. Ergonomics are great except for the pocket clip, which is a little bit better on this guy. The pocket clip is okay. Um, it's doing less of, sorry, just realized I carried this guy the other day. So it's, so we're doing more of what the um, Synapse XL is doing. And that's just one, you know, it's, it's rise and then it stops. On the isotope, it rises and comes over to a goose bill, which I don't like. This is a little bit less. I still wish the pocket clips on these guys were a little bit shorter, but this is this is definitely more of a uh, synapse style pocket clip. So it's it's all right. You can feel it here. The comfort level of just the the lines of the frame are it's very very good. This area in here is nice and open. So if you want to choke back and get a still get a full four finger purchase on it, you can. You want to choke up a bit, get these two fingers in here, choke up on this area that's not really a choil, but it's a nice resting spot for your finger. This is also great. The only part of the ergonomics that aren't fantastic it's just the position it's mainly the length of the pocket clip if, if this was shortened up just a bit and it wasn't so pronounced right here it would be perfect still decent though not that big of a deal not something that should be a deal breaker for anybody very very uh you know just straightforward classic vero lines it's the same you know lines as uh, the synapse here we just have like these two large chamfered areas and then this flat area in here i still think it would be awesome to see some texturing right in here diagonal diamond pattern yeah it might throw the look of everything off just a little bit but it would it would be nice to kind of break this up because this is very open and plain other than the Anno on the hardware, which looks really good. The uh, the new one that's coming, I've seen if you're looking at that and going, I would I would love that if they just didn't anodize the hardware. The new one has pictures that look just like that. The, 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 the hardware's not anodized. I don't know if you'll have other choices or what, but yeah, that's that's definitely the case there. Uh, the Anno continues on into the backspacer, which is very, you know, just straightforward and sort of, you know, the whole thing is kind of, kind of understated. And then you get to looking at it and you're like, oh, this, this has a lot of unique elements, right? So uh, the pocket clip also looks fantastic. That's the nice thing about the clip is that it follows the lines exactly. It looks like it was actually made for the knife, which it obviously was. Uh, and it carries nice, it's kind of a medium depth, which is just fine. No big problem. <laughs> no big problem, people, human beings say. Yes, that's normal human being dialogue. Uh, no problem. Anyways, we have a uh, stop pin that is uh, located internally. I don't know if we can actually see it. If I get that, there it is right there. You can see right in there. Follows a channel on the blade, which is great. It's fine. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Um, we are locking up a little bit later on this guy than, ouch, than what I normally, fortunately, my finger caught the swedge there. If I was back just a little bit, I would have caught the tip, but <laughs> I caught the swedge. Uh, we're locking up at... Yeah, it looks later than it is. Let's actually, let's look at the line on this knife. It's probably just been flipped a lot. Um, what is it? It's maybe 60% or so. Not bad. 
just fine. Totally acceptable. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. No pivot lash. And the detent, like I said, is medium, kind of a lumpy detent. I really wish that that was just more clicky, more heavy. Centering, spot on. Um, by the way, thickness behind the edge, it's fairly thick. I'd say, yeah, a little thicker than medium thick. It's still going to cut, still going to slice. Um, this is not going to be a grape shaver or anything like that. Um, it's running on bearings, right? So it's whatever, you know, whatever you, however you define as a hard use environment, right? Just take into consideration what it is that you're carrying into that environment, what you're going to be using it for. So how much is this guy? Uh, $299, which um, there are, you know, like when it comes to your non-USA, like your Chinese made, like your, your, your really nice production Chinese titanium frame locks running on bearings with M390, 250, we're lucky to get them at 250. And those are generally gonna be some really plain Jane, just kind of nothing, right? 225 to 250, stamped clip, sort of folding steak knife looking thing. Uh, you want more detail in the blade. You want things like a hand rub satin finish. You want a cool um, kind of a stubby tanto with some interesting grind lines. Uh, you want the look of, you know, what's going on here with a 3D milled clip, right? There's more work that goes into this in some of those knives. So coming in at $299 really doesn't make me flinch all that much. It's not a price that makes me go, oh my gosh, it's the best deal ever. But it's also not like, why, where are we, why, you know? There are definitely knives bringing just as much, uh, if, you know, maybe a little bit less detail than this, that are now coming in at $350 to $375. And I think some of those, some of those companies are starting to get a bit greedy. Vero's have always seemed reasonably priced to me. I've really never been bothered by the, uh, you know, the price tags on these things because, you know, number one, they're unique looking. Number two, the design actually works. It's one of those things where it is both utilitarian uh, and beautiful and super stylish, right? Uh, Vero doesn't tend to cheap out on things like pocket clips or, you know, any of that stuff. I just wish, the one thing that I really wish is that we, you know, could shorten up the pocket clips a little bit um, and then maybe add, especially on these frame lock models like the Axon and uh, here the Impulse, just do some texturing or something in here uh, just to break that up. I mean, these guys have a little bit more going on. We have the bolster look and we got the carbon fiber here. Yes, this is end cut carbon fiber. It looks like G10, but it's carbon fiber. And on this guy, it's a, you know, the, the character is in the fact that it is a, an integral with a um, big contoured inlay, right? So that's nice. These frame locks just look a little bit, a little bit plain in contrast, but the price is still good. Um, yeah, this is a recommendable knife. If you can get your hands on it, that's the problem, um, is you really have to be kind of, you know, I'm not saying sitting at your computer refreshing. Who does that? Why? The only time, the only, the only reason you should be doing that is if you know the exact drop time, right? If like the maker or the retailer said it's going to drop at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and then so it's like you, you got two minutes tell and you refresh. Okay, but like nobody should be sitting around just refreshing at random times of the day. That is a massive waste of time. Follow Vero, um, check out his website, sign up for email notifications. That way, you know he'll let people know, hey, this is when these are going to drop. And then you can go five minutes before and refresh the page to your heart's content. But if, if you think that the, the way people are getting their hands on these is just sitting day in and day out refreshing the page, no. <laughs> That's not, nobody has time for that. That's not how that works. Um, these are well worth hunting down and waiting for, right, et cetera. Uh, don't pay a crazy amount for them on the secondary market. But if you can get your hands on one of these for $300, the, uh, the asking price from Vero, yeah, well worth it. This is a recommendable knife. Uh, thanks again to Corey for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.